Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, and today, well, it's time for some good old-fashioned reviews, which I haven't done in a very, very long time. But screw it, we're doing a review, there's no reaction today, um, we're just going to be doing... <laughs> Uh, I say review, it's it's more of a story, really. It's more of a story of how I s stumbled upon uh, the first episode of an anime, and I was not prepared for it. Uh, so yeah, that's basically where we are in life today. <coughs> I'm going to be talking about the first episode of Oshi no Ko. Um, and yeah, if you are big into the uh the seasonal anime you've probably already seen this and so you're probably like well i don't it, it doesn't really matter what i say i'm not here to tell you whether it's good or bad i'm just here to honestly like i said we're here to kind of just tell a story basically it's story time less than review time but i don't know i'll still probably call it a review i don't know uh so yeah so you probably you may have seen this if you haven't, if you are just watching this video because maybe you're getting into anime or you just watch all the videos that I put out, which if, you know, more props to you if you are, but um, if you haven't seen the first episode of Oshinoko, um, please don't watch this video actually because it would be much better for you to experience this yourself. <laughs> Trust me, uh, because I was not prepared, as the title says, I was not prepared for Oshinoko. And let me tell you why. Before we get into the spoilers, let me tell you why. So, I'll have a big thing up when we do actually get to the spoilers. So, for the moment, if you if you just want to watch this without spoilers, uh, we'll, we'll take a minute. So, alright, here's the thing. Here's how I watch seasonal anime um i don't watch everything i'm trying to get more into seasonal anime and stuff i'm trying to get more into i guess the anime scene that's why i've been <coughs> well that's why i want to do more anime here on the channel uh i've been watching a couple other anime that i thought i might do reviews over but i didn't but i'm doing a review of this because and you'll probably see why in a sec but basically you know, I watch some of the video compilation. Well, not compilations, but like, like, hey, here's you know, like Mother's Basement will do like here's all the anime this season, you know, and where you can watch it, and that's all fine and good. And that is where I first learned about this anime, Oshinoko. But the way I normally choose which anime to watch in a season, this is probably terrible, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's anime, so who gives two shits? But, um, basically what I do is I wait until YouTube recommends clips to me. So I'll just be, you know, sitting on my phone, you know, doing stuff, jacking off, I don't know. And suddenly YouTube will be like, hey, here's a clip from Spy Family. And I think, oh, Spy Family, I wonder what that is. And this was just when Spy Family uh, started airing in season one. And it'll be some clip of Anya doing cutesy stuff and Lloyd being cool and Yor being sexy or something or adorable and I'd watch it and I was and I would be like oh that's really interesting and finally you know I was like you know what I'm gonna watch Spy Family and I did and I friggin love Spy Family and the same goes for uh pretty much every other seasonal anime that I watch um this technically didn't happen during the season that this first came out, but uh, uh, Tony Kaku Kawaii, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, I originally saw that through clips, and then I watched the first season, I'm now watching the second season. Tomo-chan is a girl, chilling in my 30s after being fired from the Demon King's army. All of that is by the same process. I get recommended clips on YouTube. So, so yeah. Yeah. So guess what clip, you can take a guess, what clip uh, was recommended to me. It was a clip from the first episode of Oshinoko with zero context. All I saw was it was one of the teen idol shows that I is in, uh, which 
it's the character that's the main character's name is I. So if I say that and you don't know the show, you might be confused. It's a whole problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns as well, but that's beside the point. Anyway, and my eyes are tired because it's first thing in the morning. It's like really first thing in the morning and I haven't had my Pepsi. And it's one of the old school Pepsi, so I better, I better open it and drink all the caffeine that it has that Pepsi has taken away from me. One of the idol concerts where there's two babies. And they're kind of talking to each other. And right there, that should have been a red flag to me. But it wasn't. These two babies are talking to each other. Like, just actually talking to each other. And I think, okay... That's kind of weird, but whatever. It can happen. You know, maybe there's some sort of weird thing happening in this anime. I don't know. Um, and then when the teen idol goes up and does her performance, the two babies start doing this uh, otaku idol dance, basically. And I thought, well, gee, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So I decided from that clip to go watch Oshinoko. And that was, I don't want to say a mistake, I just was not prepared. I was not prepared. So, the most basic plot I can give you before we get into spoilers is there is a teen idol named I, and uh, she gets pregnant with twins, and that could be a huge scandal, because teen idol fans don't want their teen idols getting pregnant. They don't want them to even have a boyfriend. They don't even want them to look at a man who isn't them. You know, like these are these are the super freaks, I would say. The super freaks. These are the people who, you know, it, it's basically it's it's people whose waifus are real, which you would think would be a good thing. I myself have plenty of waifus if you've seen a lot of my anime reactions, but having them be a real thing well, that's kind of the negative in this show. So, Teen Idol gets pregnant with twins, needs to cover it up. She goes to a countryside uh, hospital. She finds a doctor there who will help her keep this all hidden. Also, he is a huge stan for the Teen Idol. That's a word, right? That's what. That's one of the words that the youths say. I know they actually did say that in, uh, at least in the subtitles. I don't know. I actually don't know if there's an English dub of this. Uh, I did not check, but I watched it in the sub. So, um, so that's the most basic premise of this: is uh, obsessed doctor helps teen idol hide pregnancy. That's what I can give you, and if you think. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. This teen idol who's giving birth and this doctor who's really obsessed with her. Like, kind of to a creepy degree, but he, you know, when he's in her presence, he controls herself. If, if that sounds even remotely interesting to you, go watch the episode, okay? Go watch episode one of Oshinoko. Um, fair warning, though. It's 90 minutes long, and I was not ready for that either. <laughs> so... Another thing about how I watch anime is generally I am watching anime in the morning when I'm eating breakfast. Like it's, you know, old Saturday morning cartoons basically, you know? So that's basically my time to watch anime. So I'm sitting here eating my Fruit Loops like a jack-off, watching Oshinoko, and eventually I get done with my, my breakfast and I'm like, well, this episode's going on a while. Only to realize that it... I had been watching for 29 minutes, and there were about 50 minutes left. Oh, uh, excuse me. So yeah, it's an hour and a half long. It's practically just an anime movie at that point. But there is an episode 2. I don't know how long episode 2 is. I have not watched episode 2 yet. And I know this is a part of it that if you have been watching, if you've been keeping up with seasonal anime or anything, I'm behind on making an Oshinoko video. But again, I just wanted to tell a story. You know? So, spoilers from here on out. Spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers. Go watch Oshinoko if you haven't. It is really good. It's really interesting. Oh, okay. Spoilers. So I thought that the that the show basically would be okay, it's about 
hiding the pregnancy, you know? Maybe end of season, she gives birth, you know? That's not the case, because pretty much within, again, that first half hour, within that first half hour, she's about to go into labor. And the doctor, the doctor, who, again, is a crazy uh, otaku for her, um, he's murdered. <laughs> he's straight up murdered by a stalker. And I kept waiting for him to, like, get up, you know? And he didn't. And his life flashes before his eyes, and he dies not, you know, with, with some other doctor delivering the babies, basically. So, so he dies. But, here's the first twist. He's reincarnated. He is reborn as the son of the teen idol named I. Because she had twins. And he died right when he, right when they were born. Now I say that. Apparently you do not need to die and be reborn immediately. Because the other baby, the daughter, his new twin sister, um, is one of his former patients. They don't realize this. They never realize who each other is. But... It's basically his former patient who had, who died, you know, several years back, and she was also an otaku of I, and because of that, that sort of basically just seeped into him, and that's why he's uh, he's an otaku as well. He's a stan. So, so there's that, and now we get to the part where the babies can talk to each other, because they do remember. They do remember who they are. They remember all of their... They have all of their memories of their previous life. But they never confirm with each other who they actually are. So... So then, there's a whole thing where... There's a whole thing where the... Uh, the uh, eyes, like, manager, basically, his wife has to take care of the babies while I is doing her performances and stuff. And she decides, hey, this sucks. You know, this just sucks. So I'm going to send out the word that I had twins, you know? <laughs> Again, this is where the English I gets confusing. But it's beside the point. We're just going to move on from it. And the babies decide, no, we cannot let this happen. So they speak to the woman. And they trick her into divine retribution and scare her with the fear of some god, I don't know which one. I think they said Amaterasu, actually. Um, Amaterasu, the, the, the Japanese sun god. I'm pretty sure. I played Okami. Um, and, yeah. So they, they scare her, and she doesn't do it. And so this is where I think, okay. I get it. Baby hijinks. Baby hijinks. This is basically going to be Japan's version of Rugrats. Right? There we go. I finally figured this show out. I did not. I did not. We then go through a whole thing of, uh, of like, acting lessons. Uh, I goes to, uh, uh, some shoots. She starts getting more gigs as an actress. And, uh, her son, the, uh, the doctor, even though she doesn't know it either... Uh, the doctor also gets uh, a role. He uh, impresses this director, basically. And, yeah, that that all happens. It's fine. It's good. It's interesting. He, he shows up some prissy child actress, and life moves on, basically. So, again, this is where I'm thinking, okay, baby antics. Now, at that point, by the time they do the uh, the whole acting stuff... Uh, a couple years has passed, and uh, the they've basically grown to the point where people would expect them to talk. So it's okay, like it, it's not suspicious or anything. We've also already passed the uh, the point where they do the 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 otaku dance in um, in uh, the the concert. We passed that point now. Now they're a bit older; they're about three years old, and so yeah. So again, baby antics toddler antics that's the thought running through my dumbass head um it's at this point that uh the stalker 
You remember the stalker. The stalker who murdered the doctor, who was then reborn as the son, Aquamarine, that's his name, as the son, uh, or Aqua for short, um, the stalker comes back. And basically, I opens the door. He's got a bouquet and a knife. And he stabs her. Now, here's the thing. Prior to this, I had I stopped at about uh, the half hour mark uh, after my breakfast because I had to get to work. I had to I had to I had to do things with my day. I couldn't just keep sitting there. But uh, on my lunch break, I came back to Oshinoko and I went through and I finished the rest of it. And here's me being a bit of a dumbass <laughs> uh, again. Um, basically. During all of this, I kind of paused and I was like, you know what? Are all the episodes this long? I wonder, which I still don't even know. So I go on, I try to look it up on my friggin' phone. I don't know why I'm using my phone. It's probably because I normally film with my phone. So it's just rare to actually have uh, my phone on camera. So normally I film with this, but I'm filming with my webcam today. So it's just easier. Um, so I'm on my phone and I'm trying to think, I'm trying to look up. How long is each episode? That's when I happened to catch the top line of episode two, which again, being spoilers, but this will also just be, like this isn't really spoilers for episode two, so this is really just still about episode one, whatever. The first thing it says is, 10 years after I's death, hmm, which actually, now that I'm thinking about it, am, uh, Hang on, I think I'm going through Deja Vu, actually. I feel like I've heard this plot before, now that I'm, like, saying it out loud on camera. Have I heard about, like, the manga? Like, have I heard about this in manga form before? I don't know. Maybe I have. I don't know. Anyway, ten years have passed since uh, I's death, and that's when I was like, oh. Well, crap. So the entire time I'm just sitting there watching the rest of the first episode, I'm like, oh no, it's going to happen at some point. It's going to happen, and sure enough, the stalker murders her. Throughout this whole thing, by the way, I is not just like some incidental character. She kind of has her own arc, which is interesting. She kind of has her own arc, which is kind of interesting, which I, I, I'm not going to go into too much. I'm not really here to like analyze the episode that's why i kind of hesitate to call this a review i'm calling this more of just a story basically uh, the the story of how i watched oshinoko and look like a clown basically and i'm curious if any of you will relate to this and if not i hope this is just a funny story anyway because i was not ready for it so oh there's so much crap in my eye it's because i'm still tired so i'm gonna be rubbing this for a sec um, yeah, so, so I has this whole thing where basically in her younger years, she was never loved and never was able to feel any love. And in becoming a teen idol, where you pretty much always say, I love you to your fans and stuff, uh, her manager basically said like, well, maybe if you keep that lie up eventually that lie will become the truth you know and so she's had this whole thing about some at some point she's going to say i love you and mean it and she did as she was dying as she was dying cradling her son aqua with her daughter you know behind a glass door basically she finally said it and then she dies and i don't know if i put up any any footage or any images throughout this uh, if i've edited that in into this video but um i will try to put in just the image of her dead <laughs> which i don't know maybe youtube wouldn't like that i mean i know a lot of people have been censoring blood and stuff in their youtube videos so maybe i won't uh i'll maybe i'll try to censor i don't know i don't i don't even give two shits i'm a small youtuber anyway so so yeah, just seeing that and like the light going out from her very distinct anime eyes, um, that was a lot. That kind of hit me, mainly because I wasn't ready. Again, I thought this was just going to be Jap Japanese Rugrats, you know? I was not ready. So she's dead. 
um, she's dead, and the whole thing of being reborn as a teen idol's children out the window <laughs> kind of out the window at that point but but again there's a lot of stuff going on in this first episode that i am skipping over there's a whole thing with uh the daughter ruby who you know she always you know she couldn't really move in her previous life because she was uh disabled and now she's having trouble you know trying to dance but she wants to and her mother the teen idol helps her dance all sorts of great moments in this i'm just you know telling the story so she's dead, and I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. Um, and then, and then, I just kind of sat there and I was like, "Okay, what do we do next? What happens next? I don't know." But then, but then, uh, good old Aqua, good old uh, Doctor Aqua, Doc Aqua. I don't know. I don't know what you want to call him, Aqua. Uh, Aqua ensures that we continue this show because otherwise if this had not happened basically I don't know if I would go on to episode 2 because I felt burned by this show in a way that only I could just because of the you know the perfect storm of circumstances that led to me watching this show so so yeah I was kind of iffy because there are other, uh, another actually, actually another anime that I would get clips for, and then I I tried watching it was uh, the uh, the 2022 version of uh, how do you say it uh, uh, Urutse Yatsura. The I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you know it. Um, I watched the first two episodes of that, but I never continued because I honestly like I hadn't seen the original. I'd never seen the original. I'd only seen some clips. So, I tried watching the 2022 version, and honestly, I just really can't enjoy the main character. Uh, I just, I, I think he's just kind of too much of a prick. So, I just couldn't enjoy it. So, I, I kind of left that. So, I was kind of thinking, okay, okay, I think I'm not going to be watching episode 2 of Oshinoko. But that's when Aqua makes sure that I have a hook. Make sure that there's a hook there to uh, keep me for episode two. So basically, Aqua realizes that the stalker should not have been able to find I. It should just not have happened. Because everything about her was kept secret. You know, even like in the beginning, how would he have known that she was having twins? You know, there's no way this, this stalker could have known this. So... We have to go through everyone who could have fed him information until eventually the one person who we have not talked about this whole video, their father. Because even though uh, Ruby somewhat speculates it, I don't think that this is, you know, uh, a, uh, a virgin conception. Like, I don't think the twins were just given to I. I don't think she's, you know, Mary or what the hell's Anakin's mom's name? Her? I don't know. Um, all I can think of is Sheev, but that's not, that's Palpatine's name, so that's not... Shmi! That's it. Shmi Skywalker. That was her name. What a... Oh, George Lucas and his names. So, yeah. Um, so there's the father. We haven't talked about him. He has not shown up. We don't know who he is. So Aqua decides, alright, I am going to track down our father and I am going to kill him <laughs> in what now again let me remind you what I thought this show was going to be um doctor helps teen idol cover up pregnancy rugrats Japanese rugrats here's what it actually is the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> like, it, they have now teased me a Count of Monte Cristo-esque revenge story. Because now, it is ten years, as uh, the plot description for episode two said. It has been ten years. Um, Aqua and Ruby are now fourteen... Excuse me. They're about fourteen, I think. Um, they still don't know who each other is. They, they have not recognized each other yet. But they still retain all of their memories 
from um, from their previous lives, and Aqua is still set on finding his father and killing him for what he has done to I. And that's where it cuts off. And I don't know if there's any, like, scene after the credits. I'm kind of giving up on those, That, but that's beside the point. I don't know if there's a scene after a credits to, to tease that even more, but that was basically the hook I needed. Because otherwise, I would not have gone on to episode two. I'd have been like, well, what am I, what am I watching? I thought we were going to have some shenanigans. Instead, she died. You know? So, I was not prepared for Oshinoko. And I don't know how many people were. I'm sure there were people who just knew the plot synopsis. But, I mean, at the end of this 90-minute episode, Aqua is like, ah, yes, the prologue is now done. It's like, that was prologue? That was prologue? I thought that was going to be the whole show. That was prologue. Goodness. So... That's where we are. That's where I am in life, basically. And this has gone on longer than I needed it to, because you know me. Every time I try to do a shorter video, it just doesn't work. I, the recording here says 27 minutes. I bet this is still long, but I just wanted to tell a story. This was the story of how I watched Oshinoko Episode 1 without almost any context. So... So yeah, what did you guys think? Have you seen the first episode of Oshinoko? I hope you have if you're watching this far into the video. If you have, let me know what you think about it. Uh, I will definitely be watching. I know uh, episode 2 and episode 3 are already up, so I'm going to be watching those as well. Um, what did you think? Did you go into it almost completely blind? If so, what was your experience like? Did anyone have an experience like me? I'm going to bet no, but still... But yeah, this wasn't really a review per se of episode one, and I'm probably not going to be doing uh, reviews of every individual episode. Maybe once the season ends, assuming this is a normal anime season, then I might do uh, another video going through everything else. But other than that, I, I don't even know. I, don't, I might not even make another video about Oshinoko. I just wanted to tell a story, basically. So, yeah. That is basically it, and uh, so when am I uploading this? This, and again, this will be late. Uh, I'm recording this on April 28th. I'm probably going to put this up um, on May 6th. Uh, I'm going to put this to Saturday, May 6th. Um, next week, and here I should just get it out now. Next week uh, on Saturday, there will be a review of One Piece. Yes, I'm serious. I'm going to start One Piece reviews uh, on Saturdays. They won't be consistent, but uh, but that's going to be the new thing. So, yeah. Um, but that is basically it. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for some sort of review i'm sure i don't know uh there's also another video you can go click on if you want there's also a subscribe button and a patreon button on screen as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those see you guys later